Hello everyone. Today we're going to have a look at Holyrood Palace. So when I say we're going to have a look at it today, I actually really mean we're going to have a look at it today. We're not going to go in because you're not allowed to film inside because it is still a uh, royal residence. So um, I think you can take pictures in bits, little bits, and maybe film a tiny bit, but not a lot. So we're going to have a little look outside and I'll tell you a little bit about the history. And I think, I think there's a Tough Mudder event going on in Hollywood Park. It might be finished by now, I'm a bit later in coming out to film today. But if there is, we'll have a look at that as well. So it's Saturday, the 25th of August. It's the last day of the Edinburgh Festival. No, second last day of the Edinburgh Festival. Finishes tomorrow, Sunday 26th. And I have to say, by the time it gets to this, Everyone's ready for it to end. All the performers are exhausted. I hear you. All the performers are exhausted. Everyone's tired. The city is tired from it. And it's funny because as of Monday, Tuesday, it's completely different. It's so, so quiet. Monday night, there is a fireworks display. It's called the Virgin Fireworks Display because it's Virgin that sponsor it and do it. It's to mark the end of the International Festival, not the Fringe Festival. But the two of them run simultaneously at the same time in Edinburgh, so it's essentially, they meld into one. The international stuff tends to be big, flamboyant, quite artistic shows, and the Fringe can be anything, really. Um, well, the international festival can be anything, but I'm kind of darting in between, on both sides of the road here. Because people are coming towards me on both sides of the road, and I'm trying to not be shy and talking to the camera when people are coming at me. I know, I know, you think I'd be used to it by now. But yeah, so it's, it's coming to the end and everyone's glad it's coming to the end. We're all really tired of it. In a nice way, you're like, right, okay, it's been great. Can we sleep now? I'm not going to do a fringe video. You've had enough. You've had three in a row. You'll get some more next year if you manage to stay with us till next year. But we're going to have a look at Holyrood Palace, which is coming up for a thousand years old. Just as we arrive at Holyrood Palace here, see this? This is literally right in front of Holyrood Palace. It's, the Hall of the Palace is literally right behind that building. But this area here has been blocked off for a little while because they are building that area there. They're reimagining a 17th century royal garden. They're building it, and I'm assuming it's going to be for everyone to walk in and have a little nice wander about since all the pictures there seem to have people wandering about and having a really nice time. Um, but I, I'm guessing this sort of building here they're converting into a sort of maybe tourist attraction, maybe a visitor centre, museum-y kind of thing to tell you all about that and maybe the palace and things. But that's a spectacular big covering they've got over the building of the National Animal of Scotland, the unicorn with both flags, um, the lion rampant and the saltire on there. See that? That's the lion rampant, which is the royal crest of Scotland and the saltire there. And here, on this side, they've got a spectacular print of a painting of Holyrood Palace, which is kind of, I, thanks boss, which is kind of ironic really, because you see if that building wasn't there, you would see Holyrood Palace. In fact, you see this building here on the painting, yeah? That's this building that this is covering. That's trippy. So here we are, walking up to, well, as close as I'm gonna to get to the palace today. That's it right there, Holyrood Palace. Or as I like to call it, the Queen's House. Now obviously the Queen's not in residence right now. It's just got the lion rampant flying above it. If the Queen was in, I think it'd be the Union Jack. Ooh, and there we go. That is Holyrood Palace, right there, and just there. That's an old burnt down church abbey, more on that in a little while. But there we go. It's a beautiful palace, as palaces go. And also, while we're standing outside the gates here, I want to show you that right there. See that? We're going to come back to that, remember that. Okay, so Holyrood Palace, there's a nice little bit of grass here at the side that no one seems to be standing on, so it's nice and unembarrassing for me. Not that I'm embarrassed, I'm shy. Um, 
Holyrood Palace dates back to the start of it, date to 1128. So just under a thousand years old. And it must be frustrating that it's just under a thousand, but I'm sure once it hits that thousand, it'll be incredibly grateful and thank you and excited and amazing and you're all awesome. But I'm sure that's what the palace would say once it hits a thousand. Um, just a feeling, don't know why. Yeah, so it dates back to 1128 and it didn't start as a palace, it started as an abbey uh, for monks where beer and wine and whiskey and things were probably made in there because that seems to be what monks did, really. But yeah, it was started by David the First in 1128 and the reason he started an abbey on that site is because this, even though we're at the bottom of the Royal Mile, one mile, one old Scots mile, away from um, Edinburgh Castle. Can you believe I couldn't remember the name of Edinburgh Castle? It's not as if it's 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 in Edinburgh and it's a castle, but for some reason that eluded me there. Yeah, um, even though Edinburgh Castle was there, I've showed you where the city limits was, remember? It's about halfway down the Royal Mile at um, the World's End pub, where the city gates used to be. Um, so all of this area here, which is kind of hard to believe now, all these buildings, roads, um, Arthur's Seat's just over there, um, but right in the smack centre of town, all of this was a forest. It was all forest land, I think there was a lock there, and Arthur's Seat and things, and this is where the king would come to go hunting. And he was on a hunting trip one day, and um, whilst out on that hunting trip, now, I've read a couple of things. One, he came across a deer, Two, he had a vision of a deer. One was the deer was standing over him. I, I don't know. The, it's, it's, you know, it's almost a thousand years ago. Uh, but it's, it, it, I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Um, bleh. <laughs> so, it, it, in one way or another, he saw a deer with a cross. The cross, flo a cross. <laughs> floating in between, I was trying to show you where, but it was floating in between its antlers. He had this vision of a deer with a cross. Why it was a deer, I don't know. Doe, a deer, female deer. Um, and he decided that we will start an abbey on this for this holy vision that he'd had. We'll, we'll start an abbey on this site. Um, and he called it Holly Rood, or the Holly Rod. Um, translating as the Holy Cross, Holy Rood. Um, so that's why an abbey started there. So the abbey was there and as time went on, he then, well not him, kings and queens, mostly kings, um, after him, they all started to add little bits. The, the abbey would get frequented by the royal family or the king quite a lot. So eventually a room, a little building was added onto the side of the abbey for them to stay in. And then after a little while, we're talking centuries, um, I think around about the 15th century, the king was kind of like, you know what? This is nicer than the castle. This little, beautiful little house on the side of this um, abbey is really nice. So you know what? I'm going to build a palace here instead of staying at the castle, which is a mile away. I'm going to build a palace here instead. So the start of Holyrood Palace started as we know it now in the 1500s. There's probably not a lot of that remaining either, to tell you the truth. Um, and generally from the 1500s up to about 1890-ish was when the palace to what we know now was built. It's had a lot of history in it, a lot. Mary Queen of Scots has a room in there. Her room is still there, you can see it. Her bed is still there. Um, Rizzio fell there. If you don't know who Rizzio is, it was uh, apparently thought to be Mary Queen of Scots's lover. Um, and one night when she was in there with her handmaidens and Rizzio, uh, I think the king, with a little bit of jealousy, came in with his pals and killed Rizzio. And there's a plaque on the floor that says, this is where Rizzio fell. And I'm no surprise because I almost tripped over it myself. Um, but yeah, so that happened. Mary Queen of Scots didn't have a lot of luck, to tell you the truth. She really didn't. There's a film of Mary Queen of Scots coming out, actually. I just saw the advert for it not long ago. There's only one bit in my head, just from the advert, I'm like, ah, ah. See, Mary Queen of Scots had a French accent, not a Scottish accent, and the reason being she became queen at a really young age. We're talking like two. Um, 
So for her safety, she was taken over to France, because Scotland and France had a very good friendly relationship. Um, and she was taken over to France and raised in France, and then didn't come back here till she was an adult to take over as queen. So she had a French accent, she learnt to talk. Mary Queen of Scots was 100% Scottish, but she had a French accent and was raised in France and then came back here, but she was raised in France, which was a Catholic country, country, which was a Catholic country. By the time she came back here, the Reformation had happened with John Knox, so this had became a Protestant country. So then we had a Protestant country being ruled by a Catholic queen. Oh, and then she was arguing with her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I, down in England. And oh, it was a, it was a to-do. It was a to-do, let me tell you. Um, so that's kind of what was going on there. I really didn't mean to get into all the Mary Queen of Scots stuff there, but it's an interesting story. Um, Guy Fox is pulled in there because her son became the first king of Scotland and England, and then Guy Fox tried to kill, which then we've got. It's it's really interesting. That's a story for another time. Although I've told you the start of it now. So yeah, so that was kind of how Holyrood Palace started, and then that, that, then Mary Queen of Scots, and then later in the 1800s, uh, Queen Victoria used to come up to Scotland a lot, a lot, because her husband, Prince Albert, was German, and the Scot Scottish countryside reminded her, uh, reminded him, sorry, a lot of Germany. So he loved coming up to Scotland, and she she adored Queen Victoria, adored her husband, um, and when he died. She mourned for a long, long, long time. But anyway, um, watch Mrs. Brown, watch Victoria. Anyway, yeah, so he built, a, he did a lot of work on there because he loved coming up to Scotland here in Balmoral, just loved it, which is why uh, the love of uh, coming up to the Scotland and countryside, I think, is now endemic to the royal family. Now, even though they are, you know, descended from Mary, Queen of Scots, um, it. <sighs> I'm getting into royal history now. It's not what I meant. I just wanted to tell you about the palace. My brain just goes off on a tangent and I can't stop it. And see, the thing is, I'm here on my own. It's fine when I'm here with Kirsten because she can keep me on track a little bit and Kirsten comes in with little bits of information. When she's not here, I'm blah, 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 blah. it just all keeps coming out. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, so that's kind of how Holyrood Palace got to be the palace it is today. So it's, it's a short bit of history for you today, but it's a nice bit of history. Um, the palace is a funny one to come and visit because, like I said, you can't really see all of it because it is royal residence. You can't... Um, I think about half of it is still, you know... It's like if you go down to London and go to Buckingham Palace when on the short period that it's open, you can't go into it all. It's, I don't think it's cheap. Um, they have, me and Kirsten did it a few years ago, randomly, on my birthday a few years ago. Um, we just decided to come into town and have a day in Edinburgh, so we went to Holyrood Palace and you get headsets, so in whatever language you want, and you know, there's numbers all about, and you press a number and it tells you the history. Um, so we had our own headsets each, and we thought it was hysterical just to try to sync it up and just be standing the two of us just going, ooh, ooh, with, <laughs> made us laugh. But yeah, it's, it's nice to see it, and it is endemic in Scottish history. It's got it's got a lot that happened in it. The the old ruin of an abbey church that's in there is spectacular to look at. It is phenomenal to look at, um, and it is the building itself is beautiful. Um, oh, and I should say, remember the the bit I showed you with the deer on the gate with the cross. That's Holyrood. That's what it is. That's why it's there. Just so you know, next time you come, you can say, "Oh well, I know." I know why that's there, because I'm part of Clan Brunford, 1000. Um, so, I know why that's there. Anyway, let's go around the other side. Um, just in case you don't know, that's the Scottish Parliament there. And then there's that big building that we started off looking at, and the palace right there. So let's go into the park a little bit, and we'll get a couple of other side views of the palace. And look, Salisbury Crags there, adjoined to Arthur's Seat. Now I've came around to this side because normally you get a great view of the palace from this side as well. However, unfortunately, there seems to be some work going on and they've built that. Looks like I missed the, uh, the Tough Mudder event. They're starting to pack it all away here. We're back at Arthur's seat. That's the back of Holyrood Palace right there. That's Palace Gardens. Um, although technically all of this is the Palace Gardens. It's the Royal Park of Holyrood. Um, I've missed the, the Tough Mudder, which would have been nice. I wouldn't have minded. Go and have a look. Well, we have a seat on Arthur's seat. 
I mean, it's called a seat. Yeah, I'd, I would love to do a Tough Mudder at some point. I've started running again recently and I would like to do it, but I'm not allowed to do it. And the reason I'm not allowed to do it is because Kirsten thinks I would die. <laughs> and she's got a point. Um, but it was a small one, it was only a 5k. But it was fun. I found myself a rock to sit on. So I'm going to sit on it. Give you a nice wee panoramic view of where I am. So there we have Holyrood Park. There, Arthur seats here, you can't see it, it's right behind me. Um, that is a car park, but behind that is um, the Palace of Holyrood, right there, Scottish Parliament, and then that there is Dynamic Earth, the tourist attraction. So, um, I think, in case you didn't got the hint, a massive thank you's in order to you all. We hit a thousand, which is always what I've always just planned on being. A thousand, and then it's, this, this channel is purely about me and Kirsten enjoying Edinburgh and everything and just sharing it with you and a lot of you have found it really useful for planning your visits which is kind of ideal so um, thank you if if more people join us that's amazing but a thousand was always what I was just gonna like wow if we get a thousand I'm just that so thank you I'm not gonna go on about it because I've kind of went on about it to the build-up to it and um, it's been exciting that day that I was on Instagram and I was watching I was like, oh we're at 999! And then like a moment later I was like, we're at 1000! Ah! It was very exciting um, for me. The people in my work, in my office were like, what are you doing? I'm like, shh, it's important. Um, but we hit it, so thank you. You're all amazing. Uh, Clan Brunford, you're all spot on. Uh, as I would say, you're all absolutely spot on. Um, I've got a little question, if you don't mind answering, because um, obviously I'm always looking for ideas, so if you follow us on Instagram, you'll notice that I put a thing on last night not knowing what I was going to do today, so sometimes I have to wrap my brain and I go, what do I know about? So I knew about that, so I told you about it. Sometimes I study, sometimes I just know. Um, sometimes I make it up and you never know. Yeah, so I, there's lots of other stuff. The, the, obviously, we will go around Scotland when we get a chance, but we both work full time, so it's difficult to get time off to go around Scotland. We'll go around the rest of Scotland when we get a chance, because we'd love to see more of Scotland and tell you bits and bobs about it. But do you want, if we go other places outside of Scotland, do you want to see that? Like, if we go down to London, I know we've got videos of us going to London on the channel, and we've got videos of us going to Florida on the channel, because it started off as just a way of keeping memories and that was what it was first about, that was Kirsten's idea. It's hard that started it. Um, I just sort of went, all right, I'll do it. And then off I went and did it. I almost fell off the rock I'm sitting on right now. I'm sitting on a rock, see? Just about fell off there, as I was doing an impression of a Muppet. Because there's other bits about Scottish history as well as going other places and showing you outside Scotland if we go places and, and joining us on little holidays and trips if he's wanted us to do that, we will. Scottish stories, Scottish songs, Scottish music. See, I, I, I've toyed with doing that for a while. Um, telling you, because some of the Scottish stories have got brilliant, brilliant stories about them. And so when you hear the song, it means a whole lot more. You get a lot more, like songs that I can guarantee you know, but you don't know the story behind it. And then when you hear the story behind it, then you listen to the song again, you're like, it's completely different. It's completely, go I get impassioned and I go off on them, don't I? Um, so I don't know if you want that. I used to sing. Um, I, 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 I would, if we randomly did one of them, did you know this is what this song was? This is who wrote it, and this because it would really be random. It wouldn't be often. But yeah, I think that's about it today. This has been a very me uh, talking to you today. It's not usually that sort of as in just chatting. It's like a conversation. It's like we were just saying there. No, we weren't. I was just saying there. But yeah, I think I think that's about it today, guys. Um, if you like the video you know subscribe you know come join clan brunford till next time bye humans